Hi folks, in part two of this week's videos, we're gonna focus on intersections of two lines and intersection of a line and a plane. Okay, so let's recall the different scenarios we have when dealing with two lines, all right? And I'm gonna group them together, uh, I'm gonna group them to two categories because I noticed that here parallel and distinct or when they're collinear, essentially the same line, so infinitely many points of intersection, what these two groupings have in common is that the lines are gonna be parallel. Now, of course, hopefully remember that you can tell that two lines are parallel by just looking at the direction vectors, because if the direction vectors are parallel, so will the lines, okay? So the first thing you should always look for uh, is whether the lines are parallel or not, okay? Then we've got the next grouping, which involves the lines intersecting at a point, so they're not parallel, or not being parallel, but still not having any intersection, in other words, being skew lines, okay? So if you determine that the two direction vectors are not parallel to each other, you know it's gonna be one of these two scenarios. So the question is, is you know, how are we gonna determine uh, which of these uh, two it is? All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, so they asked me to determine the intersection of these two lines. So the first thing I wanna look at is I wanna look at M1, okay, the direction vector of the first and direction vector of the second, and just see whether these two things are parallel to each other. And here, clearly, these two vectors are not parallel. So M1, okay, is not parallel to M2. And so I know that the only possible situations or that they intersect in a line, uh, sorry, in a point or that they are skew. Okay, so let's figure out how we do that. Now, when we solve uh, intersection problems, the idea is we're looking for the points, or at least in this case here, vectors to points that are the same on both lines. So we could try uh, equating these two R values but in the end, what these represent are two vectors. And we know that in order for two vectors to be equal, their components have to be equal. So this is why instead of working with vector form, it's a lot easier to work with, um, uh, with parametric form. And you tend to find that this is the case when you're doing algebra with equations of lines in 3D, is that it's better to work with uh, uh, with a uh, parametric form. So let's write it out here. So I've got x1 is equal to, so negative one plus three s. Okay, x2 is equal to, uh, sorry, not x2, sorry, y1, we're still, on, we're still on the first line. So y1 is equal to one plus four s. Okay, and then z1 is equal to zero plus uh, minus two s, so negative two s. And then for line two, Okay, let's do that one here. So x2 is equal to negative one plus two t. Okay, y2 is equal to zero plus three t, so just three t. And then z2 is equal to negative seven plus t. Okay, now you might be wondering why did I have to use different parameters? Okay, remember I'm looking for a point of intersection. There's no guarantee that the parameter that's gonna give me the point of intersection on the first line has to be the same parameter that gives me that point on the second line, okay? So it's vitally important in these questions, you know, especially if you're writing out the equations yourselves, that you have to be working with two different parameters when working with these two different lines, okay? But remember what we're looking for is we're looking for the points of intersection. So in other words, we want x1 to be equal to x2, y1 to be equal to y2, z1 to be equal to z2. The problem is, is if I equate these expressions, okay, which is what I want to do, is I'm going to end up with three equations, but there's only two unknowns. I only need two equations to determine uh, solutions for two unknowns. So I'm only going to work with two of these equations in order to determine S and T. Okay. Now you have to imagine doesn't make sense to only work with two equations. So we're gonna have to figure out how that third equation is gonna come into play, okay? Now I'm gonna use one and three because I'm noticing, you know, here the co coefficient of t is one and there the coefficient of t is two. These seem to be the easiest ones to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with 
equating the x components. So negative 1 plus 3s equals negative 1 plus 2t. In fact, that's really nice because, hey, I can even simplify that. The negative ones cancel out from both sides if I add 1 to both sides. Okay, And then I'm going to work with the z components. I'll call that equation 3. Okay, and now I'm going to equate these, and we have negative 2s equals negative 7 plus t. And so now I can solve this like a regular uh, system of equations. So I won't change equation 1, but I'll eliminate, and you're going to see me almost always using elimination, just to give you a heads up here. So I'll keep equation 1 as it is. So 3s equals 2t, because we simplified it up there. And then I'll multiply equation 3. By two. Okay, so that's going to be negative 4s equals negative 14 plus 2t. And now I can subtract to eliminate the 2t's. Okay, so 3 minus negative 4, so this is 7s equals, well, there's no constant, so 0 minus negative 14 is 14, and we've eliminated the 2t's. And so here, s is equal to 2. Okay, nice and easy. Let's now use one of these equations to determine the t value. I'll use equation one. Looks pretty easy. So I have three times s, which is two, is equal to two t. Okay, so two t equals six, t is equal to three. Okay, but this is where we have to be careful. Okay, what we found were the s and t values that make the x and z components equal. Okay. What we have to show is that these same values of S and T also make the Y components equal. And if they are, then we have a point of intersection. And if we don't, then that must mean the lines are skew. Okay, so this value of S and T, I know they're the only ones that make the X and Z components the same. I have to check to see whether they do the same for the Y. So let's check Y1. So y1 is 1 plus 4s, 1 plus 4 times s, which is 2. So 1 plus 8 is 9, okay? And now here, let's check y2. From the other equation, it's 3 times t, and t was equal to 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. So we see that they're indeed equal. So what this tells us is we know the lines are not parallel to each other, okay? And so what we found was an S and T value that gives us a common point between the two lines. So we have a point of intersection. So now, how we determine the whole point, all we have here is the Y values. Well, I'll take either S or T, stick it into the X, Y, and Z to determine my point. Now, like you would have done back in, uh, in uh, grade 10, you really only need to use one of the equations to determine the point of intersection. I'll just do both just to show that I indeed do have the same point. So if I take line one, okay, what do we have? We have x1 is equal to negative one plus three s, and s was equal to two. So negative one plus six is five. Let's check x2, make sure it gives us the same thing. Negative one plus two times t, which is three. And negative 1 plus 6 is 5. Check. We already checked the y's. We don't need to do that again. So let's check the two z's. So negative 2 times s. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then z2, we have negative 7 plus t. And t was equal to 3. So we also have negative 4. So there we go. Okay. In principle, I really only needed to use one of these. Okay. But it's always nice to check. Okay, this would have been line two. Okay, so our point of intersection is equal to x equals five, y equals nine, z equals negative four. Okay, so let's go through the steps again. Step one, work with parametric form. Step two, choose any two of the equations to solve for your parameters. Okay, and then you must check the third one to see that it also produces equal values. And if it does, then point of intersection. If it doesn't, no point of intersection, the lines are skew. All right? So, just gonna give you a heads up. Even if there is a point of intersection and you get the right answer, if you do not do this step, you get maximum half the marks for a question like this. 
because this step is integral. It shows me that you understand that just solving for S and T doesn't necessarily give you a correct answer. Okay, this is an integral part of that solution. All right, so if we take a look at the next one, okay, again, very similar. I look at the two, uh, I look at the two direction vectors and I see that they're clearly not parallel to each other. Notice I use that for parallel, so this is not parallel. So now I go through my whole uh, procedure. So x1 is equal to one plus three, uh, Oh, sorry, I was mixing them up there. So x1 here is 2 plus s. x2 is 1 minus s. x3 is just s. Okay, because 0 plus 1 s. And then let's do the second one. x2 is, sorry, I keep doing this, making that mistake. And I actually know why I'm making this mistake. It's because, well, when you get to three, four, five dimensions, you don't work with X, Y, Z anymore. So I guess I just have to get used to this. Sorry about that. X1, Y1, Z1. So let's do the other side. X2 is 3 plus 2T. Uh, Y2 is 0 plus 3T. So 3T. And then uh, Z2 is negative 1 minus T. Okay. So I'm definitely going to work with... Uh, Z and, eh, you know what, let's work with uh, Y and Z this time, okay? Y and S, uh, X and Z would have also been good, so I could easily cancel out the X's, but it's just, I don't want you to think that you have to always use X and Z. So let's use 2 and 3. So what do we have? We have 1 minus S is equal to 3T, and then for the Z's, we have S is equal to negative 1 minus t. And here we just have to add them together. We didn't even have to do any work. Okay, so 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative s plus s is 0. Okay, 0 plus negative 1, negative 1. And then 3 uh, minus t. Okay, 2t. So here we have 2 equals 2t. t is equal to 1. Okay, and now... I might as well use equation three to find the S value since it's already isolated. So S is equal to negative one minus T, which is equal to one. So negative two. Okay. So here, remember that T equals one, S equals negative two, only make the second and third components equal. Let's check the X's. So X1 is equal to two plus S. So two plus negative two, so that's zero. And then let's test the other line. Uh, X2 is equal to three plus two times T, which is one. Oh, and that's equal to five. So that means that the S and T that make the X and Y components the same can't make the X components the same. So this means there is no point of intersection means the lines are skew. Okay, now they didn't ask us this. They just said determine the intersection. There's no intersection. But another way to answer the question would be, you know, what is the uh, nature of the relationship between these two lines? And this is how we would describe it. Okay, so again, absolutely essential that you're checking those two. All right, so this is a general idea. Uh, Okay, we went through a recap for the last one. We saw in this case here, skew lines instead of one point of intersection. Let's now move to working with lines and planes. Okay, we're actually going to see this one algebraically is a little easier. Okay, now it's easier in that I am working with the Cartesian equation of the plane. If I was not working with the Cartesian equation of the plane, if I had the vector equation, I think my first step would be to turn it into the Cartesian equation because you're going to see just how easy it is, okay? And what we have here is the line given in vector form, but in the Cartesian equation, x, y, and z appear, you know, explicitly as themselves in the equation. So similar to what we did before, it seems to make a lot more sense to take this 
and put it in parametric form. So as I said before, when you're doing algebra with the equation of a line, almost always better to work in uh, parametric form. So here x is 1 plus 2t. Okay, y is equal to negative 6 plus 3t. And then z is equal to negative 5 plus 2t. But remember what we're looking for. We're looking for the points of intersection. We're looking for those points where this x, y, and z on the line is the same as this x, y, and z in the equation of the plane. And so we're going to perform a substitution here. So this is one of those cases where we're going to use a substitution as opposed to an elimination. All right. So wherever I see an x, y, and z in the equation of the plane, I'm going to replace them by these three expressions. Okay. So let's see what happens. We have uh, four times x, which is one plus two t minus two times y, which is negative six plus three t and then plus z, which is negative 5 plus 2t minus 19 equals 0. And lo and behold, what kind of equation do you have? You have a linear equation. Okay. Now think about what types of answers you can get in a linear equation. Well, obviously you can get a single answer, but you could also get no answer, or you can get infinitely many answers. Okay, and if you don't remember how those come about, I suspect we might see them in the, uh, in the next question there. All right, but for now, let's just try to solve here. So what do we have? We have 4 plus 8t uh, plus 12 minus 6t and then minus 5 plus 2t and then minus 19 equals 0. So let's keep the t's on this side. 8 minus 6 is 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, and here we have 16 minus 5, <clears throat> 16 minus 5 uh, is 11, 11 minus 19, let me make sure, I don't want to make any silly mistakes here, so let me make sure here, what do we have, we have 4 plus 12 minus 5 minus 19 is negative 8, okay, but I'm bringing that to the other side. So that's eight. So T is equal to two. And so what we did is we found that when T is equal to two, the X, Y, Z on this line will be the same as the X, Y, Z on this plane. So I can just stick this into my equations. X equals one plus two times two equals, what do we have here? Four plus one is five. Y is equal to negative six plus three times two. So negative six plus six is zero, and z is equal to negative five plus two times t, which is two. So negative five plus four is negative one. So we have a point of intersection of five, zero, negative one. Okay, so a lot of ways, a lot less work. So again, to recap the procedure, all right, rewrite your vector equation of the line in parametric form, and then substitute each of the three components into the individual variables of the equation of the plane. And hopefully solve for t. Once you have t, input it back into the line to determine your point of intersection. All right, so let's keep going and let's do exact same thing here. It's gonna be our last question with a little additional question underneath. Okay, so it says determine the equation of the line, uh, sorry, the intersection of the line and the plane. So very similar to before. Let me start off by parametric form. So 0 plus 2t, so 2t, y equals 1 minus t, and then z is equal to negative 4 plus t. As before, let's substitute into the equation. So x is 2t, okay, plus 4 times y, 1 minus t. Uh, plus 2 times z, negative 4 plus t, okay, and then minus 4 equals 0. And again, my linear equation, so 2t plus 4 minus 4t uh, minus 8 plus 2t minus 4. And so here we end up with 2 minus 4 is negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. Oh. That's interesting. 
4 minus 8 is negative 4, minus 4 is negative 8. Bring that to the other side. And all of a sudden, you come up to something which is impossible. Regardless of what t is, 0 times t is never going to be equal to 8. So that must mean that my original assumption that I could find an x, y, z from the line, which is equivalent to an x, y, z on the plane, can't occur. So this tells me that there's no point of intersection. They must be parallel and distinct. Okay. Now, remember that there's a third possibility that the line is on the plane. So you can imagine that if we had infinitely many points of intersection, we would have ended up with something like 0t equals 0. Because that tells us regardless of what t is, well, 0 is always equal to 0. So that must mean there's infinitely many points of intersection. Okay. In this case here, we have a what we call a contradiction. And so our uh, uh, what comes from that is that there is no point of intersection. So the line and plane, because oops, and plane are parallel and distinct. That's the only possible option. Okay. But remember how when we were talking about two lines, we realized that, hey, you can determine before you even start whether the lines are parallel. The question is, is there a way to determine whether a line and plane are parallel before you even start? Well, let's take, you know, there's my plane and there's my line if they're parallel. Now, we're working with the Cartesian equation of the plane. So it would be really nice if we can somehow use the normal vector to the plane to help us out. And this is where we realize that if the line and the plane are parallel, then this normal vector isn't just going to be perpendicular to the plane. It must also be perpendicular to the line. And this is how you can check to see whether a line and a plane are parallel. Okay, how do you do it? Check if, oops, check if the direction vector of the line is perpendicular to the normal vector of the plane. And of course, how do we check if two vectors are perpendicular to each other? We check their dot product. So for the fun of it, let's do this here. Let's take our direction vector 2, negative 1, 1, all right? And then let's dot it with the normal vector of the plane, 1, 4, 2. And let's see if they're perpendicular to each other. Let's see if the dot product is 0. So what do we have? 2, and here we have minus 4, and then here we have plus 2, and here is 0. Okay, so that tells us now that the line and the plane are parallel. Now the question is, are they parallel and distinct? Or are they, is the line on the plane? Well, really easy to check. If the line is on the plane, means any point on the line, including 0, 1, negative 4, must also be on the plane. So let's test it out. Let's test, you know, 0, 1, negative 4. Okay, and let's see what happens here. So x is equal to 0, okay, plus 4 times y is 1, plus 2 times z is negative 4, minus 4, and let's see if that's equal to 0. So what do we have? 4 minus 8, minus 4 minus 8 is negative 4, minus 4, negative 8, not equal to 0. So I could have avoided all this work if I had checked to see if they were first parallel to each other and then test it out. So there's an argument to be made that this is actually not that much work. So it might not be worth doing all this to only find out that they're not parallel and in which case you'd have to do the work anyways. All right, so uh, the last video is gonna deal with two planes. All right, we'll see you in a bit.